Yo, welcome back everybody to another video. So today's video we're going to be talking about how to work with the Mantine hooks. Now, I haven't made any Mantine hooks video yet. Um, I was supposed to do that a while ago, completely forgot. Um, but now, I figure that we can go through each individual hook and talk about its use cases. And in today's video we're going to be talking about how to work with the use counter hook. But before we do that, we have to also learn, learn how to install Mantine hooks and it's very simple. And talk about what Mantine hooks are. So let's go ahead and get started. So I suppose before we get started, I would recommend to forking the GitHub repo that's in the description down below. It, it's already set up with uh, Mantine hooks and all of its layouts and using some of its components in the library. Uh, if you don't want to, you don't have to, but that's just a tip that I would recommend doing. The reason Mantine hooks, in my opinion, is so cool is because these hooks are able to work even if you don't have a Mantine, um, if you're, even if you're not using the Mantine component library in your app. Although they can work well with them, incredibly well with them, um, let's say you're using a Material UI project, for example, or you're using Ant Design, or hell, you're not even using anything, you can still use these hooks in your React app. You can use hooks such as use counter, which we're going to talk about today, use pagination, local storage, uh, use hover, clipboard, eyedropper, all these amazing hooks that you have available to you. And we will cover most of them um, in this uh, in these next couple of videos. And so let's go ahead and talk about use counter. All right, so the way the use counter is used is very simple. All you need to do is define a variable and inside of here you need to add an array. So this array block has two um, indices. The first one is count. Um, or you can call it number if you want, whatever. It's just going to be the amount that you have, the initial value. And after that, you have handlers, at least according to the documentation. You call it handlers if you want, or you can call it options or whatever. I'm going to call it options. And then after that, all you have to do is call it use counter. And inside of the use counter, you can do zero if you wanted. So this, this will be your initial value. And if we were to display our initial value, so let's do oops, number, save it. We'll see that we have our initial value right here. If I change it to, let's say, 10, then we have save it, refresh, 10, right there. Now, within the actual use counter functions, you do have a couple of options available to you. You have um, minimum numbers that you want to allow the user to have and a maximum amount of numbers. So let's say we have, we'll set it as 0 at first. And after that, we need to do an object. Inside of this object, we have to define, we can define our min. So let's say our minimum number, let's start off at 10, and our maximum number, 69. Don't know why, but that seems like a solid number. And so now we can see that we have our minimum number set as 10. And once we do increment our counter, it'll only go up to 69. Alright, so now let's go ahead and talk about how we can actually increment, decrement, and reset and set our numbers, which are all the options that are available to us with this hook. And it's actually very simple. The way that Mantine allows us to do it, all we need to do is just add a simple button. We can also make this into a function if we wanted, but in our case, we're just going to do a simple button uh, on click. Let me go ahead and actually import our button, and we'll import it for Mantine Core. If you don't have Mantine, just you can just use a simple button available to you from HTML. And from there, all we have to do is call our options. And inside our options, we have four things, decrement, increment, reset, and set. So let's go ahead and call it increment. And inside of here, the text will just type in increment. And so now if we save it, and if you press it, it'll increment by one each time. And same thing if we were to copy this four times, let's do decrement, and let's do reset. And for this one, so this one is actually a little bit interesting. The next one is uh, for setting the number. If you have, we have to call it as a function. So we're gonna do options dot set. And inside here, we can actually set the number that we want. So let's say we wanna set it to 69. If we save it, and we have our number right here. Let me go ahead and actually put this a little bit better styled there we go so now if we were to press increment no this also is increment let me change this decrement i hope i spelled that right reset and set so now if we were to click on increment goes up by one 
goes down by one. This reset, oops, re reset. This will reset the actual number back to 10, and this will set it to 69. Now notice that we can't actually go above 69 because we set it as our max. All right, so just one limitation before I do conclude the tutorial. If you're trying to add a um, custom increment, you can't do that. You can't do like times three or anything like that. It'll only go up by one or down by one. I tried to manually change the node modules. It wouldn't let me do that either because it's a read only. So in this case, for this hook specifically, its only limitation is that you can't um, increment or decrement um, with a custom value. It's only up by one, down by one. All right, so that concludes the tutorial. We learned how to install React Native hooks, why they're useful. We learned how to work with the use counter hook and its limitations. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.